What is up everyone? I've begun editing the video that you guys have recently seen about the Hackintosh. Very sad and uh, it's down here in the corner waiting for some more attention and I'll think about that over the next couple of days, see what I want to do. But what I need to do in the meantime is get a main setup working. So that's the setup that you guys saw in yesterday's video and that's how I've been rocking for the last three months. Now, yesterday evening, I decided to have a little shuffle around and to see how I was going to fit everything in. And I think I've settled on this kind of symmetrical look. I'm not crazy about it because, like I've told you guys before, the way I use dual displays is as a primary and a secondary. Some people like to use dual displays in a symmetrical way with one kind of canvas. But the way that macOS works and the way that I like to work with two displays, I like to have the primary one in the middle right in front of me and then the second one off to the side. But that's not really going to work too well with this setup and the way that I want to try and squeeze everything in. I was actually shocked at how little room I had on this desk to work with with this particular setup that I wanted to put together. Because originally what I was going to do was put the MacBook Pro on the Griffin elevator stand in the corner over here, have it in desktop mode, so have it closed, then have one display in the middle and one display off to the side. But there's just not a lot of room, guys. There really isn't. With the cables coming out the side and stuff, it was get, it was going to be really cramped and then I'd have to squeeze the speakers in. So what I'm going to do is go for this symmetrical look. Not crazy about it, but we could be running this setup as little as... Oh, God, I'd love to say 12 months, maybe. If they bring out Apple Silicon Desktop Max and one of them tickles my fancy, maybe I could buy it in sort of 12 months' time or something. That would be awesome. So... What we're going to do is put the MacBook Pro on the Griffin Elevator in the middle of the desk here and then we are going to run it closed obviously and these are going to be the primary displays. Then I'm going to have my speakers stood up properly for once and I'm so glad about this because I kind of hate having them lying down on the desk. It really wasn't nice, didn't sound nice, didn't look nice, felt really cramped. So I'm finally going to give the speakers some breathing room, got them off to the sides there. And you guys can see I've pretty much used the entire width of the desk just with this setup. Now what will be cool about running this in desktop mode is I'll have a tiny bit more horsepower because I'm not going to be driving the Retina display on the inside. I should see a bit more performance with the external setup that I've got going here than I did back in 2015 because I ran two of these monitors and this guy's internal display in 2015 and it was a great setup but you know little chuggy on the graphics this is again integrated graphics only on this guy which I'm really glad about because I think it would have died long ago if it had an internal GPU so I made the right decision when I bought it I don't need heavy graphics horsepower in a in a laptop so I'm still chuffed about that. But when you're hooking up a load of extra displays, obviously it puts more of a strain on the graphics side of things. So running this in desktop mode, I think it's going to give me a little bit more headroom performance-wise. So that's about it, really. That's the general plan. And we're going to try and pull it off in this video. Now, the difficult part is going to be balancing all the little accessories and bits and pieces. It's going to be a little bit cluttered, not that nice. But I'm going to do my best to try and make it functional and... We're not aiming to do the perfect setup in this video, guys. I know from the beginning that this is not going to be the perfect setup, but I'm just going to make it a lot nicer than being cooped up and all cramped together on a laptop. So as soon as I can use my keyboard, mouse and displays again, that'll be nice. So let's go for it. Let's start putting this stuff off. We're going to give it a little bit of a wipe down as well, give a few things a bit of a clean and uh, let's go for it. <laughs> that's quite annoying is these speakers I've put all four feet on one side you guys remember me doing that for my initial setup what I'd really like to do now is try and remove them and put them on the bottom but they are stuck solid so what I think I'll do is order some I want some anyway I'll order some um, little pads little acoustic pads to put the speakers on and angle them up to sit on the desk so that'll be nice so that is the main portion of the desk cleared what I'm going to do is remove the mat. We're not going to take everything completely off because I'm going to try and leave most stuff in place. There's no reason to take the monitors off because all I need to do is change some of the cabling because we're going to need to use some different cables to get it all connected to the MacBook Pro instead. That's half the reason why I haven't connected them before now because I knew it would be a little bit of a challenge because I'd have to recable all this stuff. The biggest job is going to be addressing this. For those of you who remember some of my previous setup videos, I made quite a tight loom of cabling, so it's very, very tailor cable to the Power Mac G4. And 
it's going to be a little bit difficult to alter that. So the cabling isn't going to be a neat job, but hey, it really does depend when the new Macs come out. Maybe I won't be rocking this setup for that long. Okay, so we are looking a lot cleaner, which is a good start, giving everything a nice wipe over. It's looking much better. For monitors, I'll run one with a mini display to DVI cable. That's a very handy cable. And the other one I'll leave on HDMI because it's already on HDMI. So I just need to determine which monitor is the one that I need to disconnect. So to do that, I think the easiest thing to do is just plug it in. Let's see if I get anything from either of these monitors when I plug this in. Because I don't really want to go ripping out all of the cables if I can avoid it. There we have it. So. That is the HDMI monitor, so we need to connect this DVI cable to this monitor. Absolutely fine, not a problem at all. So this is all quite handy because this monitor has not got the USB hub connected. This is just DVI with that HDMI to DVI cable and power, so I can leave that as it is, cable managed as it is, because there's a nice little bit of Velcro and stuff going on back there. This guy has got the keyboard and mouse and stuff connected, so I'm going to leave that one connected, um, leave the keyboard and mouse connected to this guy, and use this as a USB hub. So that, alongside with my USB 3.0 hub, will be absolutely fine and a good combination, I think. This will be a lot easier to pull off than I thought, I think, guys. It's not going to be the neatest underneath, but I think up here, at least, it'll be quite acceptable. So this antique is making a return, the Griffin Elevator. I still remember exactly when I got it. It was my birthday, October the 1st, 2009. I got this, and I got a copy of the brand spanking new Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard. And these were the two highlights from that birthday. But something else geeky as well. I remember it was a particularly geeky birthday, but these are the two things that I asked for. And uh, I've owned it ever since. These cable management doohickeys I put on in 2015 when I did the, uh, the last MacBook Pro setup. So they'll actually come in handy for using today. So apologies for the sound of the kids in the background, folks. A bit of a manic day today. But what I've got so far is the audio interface here is connected at the back. So that kind of fits there-ish. Not perfectly, but you can sort of you can kind of balance it there. The sound of the metal scraping against it is horrible, but that's probably going to sit there because it makes sense for it to go there because I can reach it. Or shall I just... I could just have it to the side, couldn't I? I can still reach it. I thought it'd be convenient there because I can reach it really closely, but maybe it'd be more convenient over there. I might move that because it looks horrible. And then maybe get the USB hub under here, even though it's really cable-y. If I get it far back you won't see it because what I've got is a lot of USB ends now so various USBs that are going to need connecting that one as well that's display port yeah I'll figure all this out and you still need to bring HDMI up as well can't fish that one out for some reason at the moment check this out guys I've put my USB hub here and as you can see I've just rammed it in between the back and it's there stuck solid so that'll stop it from flapping about and it looks really ugly but I can tidy that up and the computer itself will cover it. I can balance the optical drive on top, job done, that'll be fine. Put my editing drive over there. So yeah, still more USBs to come, got various cabling. But I think that'll work a lot better. I prefer the interface over there as well. It'd be a bit of a stretch for the volume but it's just from the keyboard to over there, so that's fine. So I've made a slight change to the plan. This optical drive has been causing me a lot of problems. Now that optical drive will only work connected directly to the MacBook. It doesn't like USB hubs. So that kind of eats up one of only two very valuable USB ports on this thing. So initially I had this little external SSD, which is my main editing drive. It's a 500 gig MSAFR SSD. I had that connected to this USB hub and I also connected this gigabit ethernet adapter and my thought on this is kind of like well I'm using a lot of bandwidth through that one USB 3 port because I've got everything else connected as well, audio interface, webcam, 
keyboard and mouse, the entire USB hub for the monitors. So what I've done is I've left the optical drive unplugged because it's very rare that I use it anyway. I like to keep an optical drive on the setup because if somebody then gives me a disc, I can just pop it in and read it without any additional faff. And it does happen from time to time, a few times a year. And you guys know I do the odd project involving optical discs, so I like to keep one on the setup, but it's not worth dedicating a valuable USB port to. So what I've done is I've disconnected this drive from the hub, I'm going to connect the drive and the hub as my two USB 3 connections on the MacBook. Now what I could do is order a Thunderbolt to gigabit Ethernet adapter and that way I could use the second Thunderbolt port, but at that point I may as well look at buying a used Thunderbolt dock or something along those lines because that would actually be so much easier than all of this, but I don't have one so we are making do with what I do have. Okay, so that's the MacBook, right in the middle of the setup. So that's how we're looking, guys. It's, uh, yeah, certainly different. I'm pleased with the way that it's turned out. I'm not crazy on the overall symmetry, um, but I think having the interface and stuff off to the side was a much better idea in the long run. I didn't bother tidying up much of the cabling underneath the MacBook, because honestly, you've got to duck way down to see it, so that's kind of fine. I don't care about that at all. Um, I did, for a laugh, plug in the super drive to the edge of the monitor just to see, but no, it just will not work unless you directly connect it to the Mac itself. I've got a lot of room to work. It's really nice having a much better stereo image now, so maybe a little too wide, but definitely prefer it to how it was before. Looking forward to getting the speaker isolation pads because it's still vibrating the desk like hell. Um, I've got my headphones here. I reference a lot more on headphones these days when I edit my videos compared to when I owned my higher-end studio monitors, the Mackie ones. These little personas are absolutely great, but I still like to double check with the headphones and I often make adjustments. Plus I do a lot of editing in the evening time when the kids are in bed now, so on the headphones is uh, a lot easier there. I've got my camera charger over here. Nice lot of space on the corner here. Sorry about the dirt that seems to have missed my cleaning I did earlier. It's not perfect cleaning, but it's a lot cleaner. Um, I've got a good little area for my camera stuff over here. I also bought a shredder, a nice Amazon basic shredder, because I wanted this to be part of the new setup. I'm gonna try and be a lot more organized and shred my documents that I don't need. At the moment, I just cram everything into a drawer and it gets really disorganized. So I'm trying, guys, I'm, I'm really trying. And uh, one thing I haven't quite settled on is whether I want the webcam sitting here at the moment or whether I want it kind of in the middle balance there. I think that looks a bit weird, but then again, it'll be a centralized image. I may leave it there. That's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, we'll go for that. Of course, the microphone, loads of room over here. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. I mean, it's not very exciting, um, but for the next year or so, let's call it a year, this will be my setup. So look at that, guys. New edition came in today, and it's made the world of difference, and that is these acoustic foam pads for studio monitors and what I've done is I've stacked them um, usually you get this little wedge bit and you can turn it around and you can make it flat if you want a flat piece but I've stacked this on top of the existing curved piece to give it much more of an angle and they now pretty much fire, <laughs> they being the speakers, they now fire directly into my ears which is nice. I can see they're not straight and that's because I, these are too long to get a decent angle on the desk. I could do it this side, no problem, but I can't do it this side because the interface is in the way. Um, so I've just turned the speakers on them for now. And it's given these Persona speakers a new lease of life. Um, I've always been impressed by these speakers for their size and price, but I've been kind of craving a bit of an upgrade, you know. Um, so it's really nice to get a little bit more out of them just by doing this and decoupling them from the desk. I should have done this a long, long time ago. It's always been in the back of my mind, um, but now I'm getting a much nicer, nicer listening experience. Might look a bit weird, but it's about function. So yeah, I still haven't got it perfectly lined up either. It's difficult, you know, that should be over a little bit. Yeah, it'll, it'll come, it'll come. But I think for now it looks really nice and I can't really give you much of a demo. Uh, let's give you a little blast of something. I don't want to be hit by any copyright stuff. It's good. 
skip a little bit in this track, give it a little blast. Yeah, nice, really nice, about as much as I can get away with. 100 times better, it really is. You can hear it straight away. What I did as well, when I put them underneath, I was playing a track while I was doing it so I could physically hear all of the horrible rumbling just going away. I'd lift the speaker up, I'd get a bit less rumble, plop it down on the pad and it was lovely, then do it with the other one and all the rumble was gone. And then just the angle as well, so much better rather than sat on the desk and firing more at my chest and now firing directly at my, my ears, which is much better. Still not a perfect stereo image, not a great triangle, but considering you know the limitations and how you've got to sort of adapt to the space, I think this is a very functional setup. I think this is actually a really, really nice setup. Um, the only thing it's, that's taking me a while to get used to is I don't have like a middle monitor. So when I had my triple display setup, I had the primary monitor in the middle. And even when I went to dual, I had the primary monitor with the one off to the side, like I was speaking about. Now that I've got them spaced evenly, it's very difficult for me to get used to that because I just want to naturally look forward all the time. But it's just a sort of one inch tilt of my neck in order to just look at one of these for the primary display, um, which I'm sort of gravitating towards the left right now because the primary display, the secondary display, sorry, has been off to the right for a little while now. So um, yeah, this is about as much as I can do and as about as good as I can get it. So. I might hold off on a speaker upgrade for a little bit longer, but when I do get the new speakers, they'll be larger, so they'll fit nicer on these new dampening pads I've got. They'll be a bit deeper, so they'll fill them out a bit more, won't look quite as weird. But anyway, I'm not gonna ramble on too much about the speakers themselves. I hope you guys like my little temporary setup here. I'm pretty chuffed with it, and you may see slight changes. You know, my mouse is on its last legs. I know you guys are a big fan of my mouse, but it's really on its last legs. Mainly the thumb portion here, all of the nice texture has come off the side, so it's now very kind of sticky, and you can feel the surface just rubbing away sort of thing so it's not that that comfortable so maybe a new mouse in order um pretty soon i can move this over onto the main test bench mouse setup then so um <laughs> mouse setup yeah it's time for me to end the video guys hope you've enjoyed and uh it is pretty sad but i'm pleased now to have a functional setup back so it makes me pretty happy thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video The drive and the USB 3 hub as my two USB 3 